Have you joined the ultra high definition revolution? Are you ready to capture your games at a stunning 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second? Well, look no further. Or maybe do. We're gonna be taking a look at a 4K60 capture card. Is it for you? Does it solve your needs? Stay tuned to find out. Hello everyone, my name's Adam Box. welcome to another capture card review. I love these products, I have so much fun testing capture cards, and it gives me an excuse to play video games, which I haven't gotten to do a whole lot lately, so I had a lot of fun playing some games at 4K60 and recording with this little bad boy. So this is the Vision SC DP2 from Datapath, it is a 4K capable capture card that is actually more capable than most 4K capture cards that may be coming out in coming years. Now, if you don't know what 4K or UHD ultra high definition is, it's simply a marketing term, marketing term to refer to higher resolutions. Uh, UHD and 4K specifically being 3840 by 2160 or 4096 by 2160. And a lot of, well, not a lot, a, a certain percentage of the higher end PC enthusiasts have started, myself included apparently, have started getting 4K monitors. Mine's only a cheapo mono price one, but there's a lot of great 4K monitors and now TVs available that people are buying and people are starting to play their games on PC and 4K. And now the upcoming half generation of consoles is going to support upscaling to 4K with the PlayStation 4 Pro and the Xbox One Scorpio, or Project Scorpio, or whatever the heck that is. And so I've been asked quite a few times since those announcements if there's any option for recording in 4K for from those devices. On PC, you can use software to record it, but for consoles, what do you have available? This is one such option that I sought out from Datapath to review. Now this is a very, very expensive card. This is a high-end pro-level broadcast card. It costs a lot of money, but the capabilities you get with it, you're not gonna find anywhere else. Physically, let's take a look here. I'm gonna be very careful because I cannot afford to replace this. This is very similar to a standard graphics card form factor. On the actual PCI bracket, you have two DisplayPort 1.2 inputs capable of a 4K 60Hz signal at 3840 or 4096 by 2160, but two inputs at once. Pretty neat. Like I said, you're not going to get that on a lot of the 4K capture cards that may pop up in the near future. Then on the PCB itself, you actually have a couple hopper, or copper heat pipes with a big heat sink here to disperse the heat because this bad boy gets hot but unlike the black magic intensity 4k that came out this doesn't have a fan so you're not going to have to worry about additional fan noise in your machine but i did try pulling this out right after doing a bunch of recording at one point and it got hot as hell so got to be careful with that but it's fairly straightforward it's only a one slot card so not going to take up too much space and it should fit in just about any build i'm not sure if these fins are supposed to be bent inward like that they came that way when i got the card don't know this is a loner unit from data path of course now this is compatible with pretty much anything as long as you have a pcie 4x slot this is not a 1x this is a full 4x so for most of us we're probably just going to be putting it in our 16x graphics card equivalent slots which i had one in my machine now the next problem here is that it does which should be common sense but i want to make sure is clear because even i wasn't fully prepared to record with this apparently is that it does require a lot of system resources to even be able to record a 4k 60 signal in the first place now this like the magewell and epifan cards that i have reviewed in the past does most of the actual video signal processing on the card however uh, you still need a system capable of compressing and recording the signal in the first place and apparently I did not initially. So jumping into story time real quick, I originally had my main rig, which is an AMD FX 9590. It's a quad core eight thread machine, 32 gigs of RAM and a GTX 970 graphics card. That, that, that's my main editing and gaming rig. And then I have my transcoding server, which has a dual Xeon X5560 build with 32 gigs of RAM and my old GTX 660. I thought I'd use one of these, to record with this card however that did not work out whatsoever i also and if you saw i actually did an unboxing of this card and i also grabbed a display port splitter 
if you missed that YouTube card icon above or description below. So my problem that I ran into was this DisplayPort split. Apparently you can't split DisplayPort like you can HDMI. If you don't know, with an HDMI signal, you can actually buy a plethora of powered splitters, which will take that one HDMI output and send the same signal to two different outputs. So that's what I use for a lot of my capture solutions. Send it to both a TV or monitor and a capture card or something like that. Apparently those don't exist with DisplayPort. So despite me trying to do some research and this said it would support me cloning a 4K60 output, the DisplayPort switcher that I bought in that unboxing did not work. It was only, basically it just treats it as if you have two DisplayPort ports and it wasn't able to have, like power the signal, the power kept dying. So I returned that to Amazon because that was like 70 bucks. I did not want to bite just because the product didn't work for me. So you will need, if you want to clone it to your monitor and to the capture card, a signal, you need a graphics card with dual DisplayPort ports, which my GTX 970 doesn't have. Thankfully, as part of my sponsored Intel build project, I got a new rig with a GTX 1080, which does have three DisplayPorts. So in a nutshell, Originally, for like the first two months of me having this card, I wasn't really able to record a whole heck of a lot at all. My server with the dual Xeons and the GTX 660 simply wasn't able, wasn't capable of handling that 4K 60 signal. It can't really record anything like the graphics card is really messed up. But then neither could my, my actual, my FX 9590 build could not handle recording itself because playing the games at 4K and recording a 4K signal just was too much for it to handle and it couldn't handle it. The frame rate got really, really bad on both of these machines. I was able to record 1080p 60 signals even on the same computer. So I ended up getting some pretty good looking 1080p 60 gameplay from it and it looked really good. So that was my initial testing of the card was at 1080p 60 and it looked pretty great for capturing a DisplayPort signal. However, once I got my GTX 1080 build, I put this back in my main rig with the 9590 and I played games from my GTX 1080 build running one DisplayPort to my monitor, one DisplayPort to the capture card and telling it to clone across both at 3840 by 2160, 60 hertz. It worked immediately. They're, they, they do have some proprietary software for this if you want to configure it. Otherwise, it works pretty much driverless. I used it in OBS Studio. It works in Virtual Dub. Even VLC can capture it from it. Uh, I believe Wirecast and XSplit will work with it both as well. It works with pretty much anything that supports direct show devices. Set it up in OBS, split my GTX 1080 to the monitor and to this, and was capturing Call of Duty 4, CSGO, all my favorite games at 4K60, no problem whatsoever. And what's even cooler is if I run a game at a non-native resolution on across the 4K signal, it still handles it just fine. Like it, it looks like I'm recording the raw feed that my monitor gets, even if it like when you switch game, if you're running a game below the native resolution and you alt tab, it'll like freak the desktop out for a minute and resize a bunch. It recorded every frame of that instead of just going black like an Elgato normally does, which was really cool to see. Now their software that I mentioned does let you configure the uh, the inputs however you like. Like you can customize the bandwidth of the specific ports. You can customize even the actual uh, frequency timings of the display port signal to customize it for specific needs. I didn't mess with a whole lot of that, I just made sure it worked in the first place. And you do have to play with the color space settings in OBS sometimes to get it to fully show up right. Sometimes it'll even show up upside down depending on which one you have set. But works flawlessly. It I had barely any system load once I was recording from a separate computer. I just needed the computer to be powerful enough to drive both in the first place. And you got two different inputs you could switch between in a studio streaming or broadcasting setup in the first place. Drawbacks, of course, come into the fact that you do need a powerful enough computer to both record, stream, or broadcast the 4K60 signal, and another computer capable of displaying, or like to give you a signal worth recording at that resolution. So two high-end computers probably at the minimum, unless you're capturing from something like a console, in which case that is your second, and that's your, your video source. Drawback number two, DisplayPort input. Going from DisplayPort to any other kind of input is actually a royal pain in the ass and rarely works. I did have a basic DisplayPort to HDMI adapter that I used with graphics cards that I tried to record my Xbox One uh, with the console or with the capture card and I didn't recognize the signal. Now this is probably because most DisplayPort to HDMI converters go one way. It's DisplayPort out to HDMI out, not HDMI in to DisplayPort in because 
Rarely does anyone actually need to do that, so no one's really made good products for it. I reached out to my contact at Datapath and asked for their recommendation, and they they confirmed that yes, DisplayPort to other formats is very hard to convert, but they do recommend a company called Excel, A-C-C-E-L-L, -L, and I will post a link to their stuff in the description below. They said they've had the best luck with their products to convert signal types with their card. All in all, this is a very expensive product, but it is extremely capable. It's meant for the highest end of broadcaster streamers and YouTubers, or not YouTubers, but you know, content creators for essentially the highest end of video signals in the first place. So you gotta know what you're getting into and you gotta have the money to back it up, but assuming you have the high-end rigs and the need to broadcast and stream a 4K 60 signal anyway, you're probably already there. This has been my review of the Datapath Vision SC DP2. Product link will be in the description below as always. Smash the like button if you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tech videos and I will catch you in the next video. I also want to take a moment to give a huge thanks and shout out to our recent Patreon subscribers. Without you guys, these videos would not be possible and I thoroughly appreciate your help. Visit patreon.com slash to learn more.